Is that better? Welcome to another video. So today we are doing a day of plant care and also some apartment updates. So I have some new plants. I have some new pots. It's gonna be a pretty chill video. It is rainy today and it is cold and cloudy. It's one of the first full rainy and cold days here in Los Angeles. It finally feels like fall slash winter. I think we just stopped using the air conditioning like last week. I also like fall and winter because it makes plant maintenance a lot more chill. Plants aren't growing as fast and I don't have to repot as often. I don't have to water as often and I don't have to fertilize as often. Lately, I've been sticking to a schedule of taking care of my plants only on Sunday and Wednesday. That way I'm not like constantly going around and checking my plants, seeing if they need water and distracting myself throughout the entire week. Normally I take care of my plants on Sunday, but because we're filming, I'm doing it on Monday because Sunday is not a working day, so I don't film on Sunday. Let's go through some updates, like plant updates, apartment updates. Let's go check it out. So now in my bedroom, I have a desk. I got this from Castlery. It was delayed in shipment. So during Chris's like makeover video, this was supposed to be for Chris's room, but because they were out of stock on this, we got Chris a different desk. And so now I get my own desk. I have to take some photos for Castle Reeve um, for the sponsorship that I did with them. And so I needed to like fill in this wall with some stuff. So I went around the apartment and gathered some art from different areas. So this art isn't gonna be on the wall forever. I got these really large frames from my mom. She got them from her old work. And I printed out some of my own photos and I'm gonna fill these frames with them. 24 by 36 inch metal frames. These are some like photos from the old owner of the salon, but she didn't need the frames anymore so she gave them to me. Also, I am getting a new bed soon. So for the past like year and a half or maybe two years, I've been sleeping on a shiki bouton, which is like a Japanese futon bed. But honestly, it's like a lot of maintenance because you're supposed to leave it out to dry and then get some sun exposure. But I don't know, I just don't really want to have to deal with that anymore. And I kind of miss a more plush bed. So I will be getting a new bed soon. And then the aquarium that's right here. I don't think I've shown this in a while. I actually haven't really touched it since, I don't know how long it's been. It's probably been like four months. I haven't trimmed it or really done anything to it. It's just been running on its own. I think I'm gonna move this out to the living room just because it's kind of in an awkward spot in my bedroom. And here is my giant air plant or my giant Tillandsia. I just have it hanging from the ceiling right now because I don't really know. Oh, do you wanna go down? Okay, <laughs> because I don't really know where else to put it. I think I need to hang it lower so it gets a little bit more sun exposure. Other than that, um, in this room, I am dealing with a spider mite outbreak. Sometimes it's hard to get the motivation to do my pest care regimen because I know that if I start it one week, then I'm gonna have to follow up again the next week and then maybe again the next, next week. It can be like a three week long endeavor. So I just need to like get the motivation to take care of the spider mites. <laughs> My crocs are wet, so I'm going to need to get a towel to dry them. Here you are, Chris. Your crocs are ready. <laughs> so out on the balcony, I put up this shade cloth. This is a mosquito net fabric. It's like a Japanese mosquito net fabric. I think it works really well as a shade cloth. It looks kind of cool and it gives about maybe like 40% shade. It also gives a little bit of privacy from the neighbors that are over there. It's pretty sheer, but at least it feels like there's a little bit of a barrier. The pond is looking pretty nice. All of the ficus pumila looks pretty good. And then it's all this, um, the cypress papyrus. And then my fish are doing well in there as well. I got these uh, little solar powered mushrooms that are pretty cute. They light up at night automatically. My bonsai are looking nice. They have some nice moss going on. My large deuteroconia brevifolia right here. So moundy now. Another little cypress papyrus down here and a little pond thing I made. And then, oh yeah, here is my Dioscoria elephantips, my really big one. Um, it's finally put out all of its leaves. I'm planning to put something here to elevate them. The cushion's wet, Theo. You're so chilly. <laughs> it's like shaking and licking the plant. 
it's getting colder now at night, so I'm wondering if I need to bring some of my plants in. Uh, but so far they seem to be doing pretty well. Monstera Borlmark's Flame finally put out a fenestrated leaf. Got this Florida Beauty doing pretty well. Theo, are you too cold? Do you want to go inside? I'm gonna wrap Theo up in a blanket because he's so cold, but he doesn't want to go inside. <laughs> okay, is that better? Oh, this is my ficus umbellata that I bent. I wanted to show you guys this. I removed the string and the wire from this one and it's holding its shape. So I left the wire and the string on for about a month and a half and it seems to be, uh, yeah, like holding its shape and maintaining the curve. So now I'm just waiting for it to grow more and kind of like accentuate that curve as it grows taller. And then I might curve it back around. This time next year, they're gonna look really good. Um, they look a little funny right now just because they're so bare on the bottom, but I think as they grow taller, it's gonna make more sense. I feel like I did this a while ago, but I didn't tell you guys. I put a trellis on the top of the balcony right here so that way this plant can climb around and kind of create like a canopy or a little enclosure of plants. Okay. Ooh warmer in here. In Chris's room, we rearranged his bed and his desk because the configuration kind of felt a little awkward. The headboard was covering part of the window and then also covering part of the curtain. It was blocking a lot of light and blocking the view, which made it feel kind of tight. We moved Chris's desk over here and we moved his bed right there. Before Chris's desk was against this wall and then his bed was against that wall but now it feels a lot more open and I think the layout makes a lot more sense. Here in the plant office, I have some new plants that I got. Um, so I got a new platycerium. I got this with Jahao. This is a platycerium ridleyi like mini form of it. It's mounted on this giant trunk of tree fern, which is pretty cool. I haven't grown one like this before. Jahao got one as well. His looks nicer though. He got like a mermaid ridleyi. I'll show you guys a picture on the screen. Oh, do you want to go down to you? There's a ton of live moss growing on it. Here's a little smaller Ridley eye growing. And then this is a new leaf coming out. <laughs> I also got this little ant fern. I need to repot this. I think I'll repot this today. I believe the common name for this is Jurassic Sensitive Plant. Um, and I got this from my friend Vincent. I need to feature this on a unique plants video because it's pretty cool and I don't see that many people talk about it. I set up the Soltec grow light right here, so I'm planning to pot a bunch of my passiflora propagations in this big pot right there, and then have them climb up this trellis and then probably trellis them all around the office. And then I got some new pots. I think most of them are out in the kitchen, but I'm storing my pots up here on the shelf now. Here, I put my Dua Terra base, so it's like a terracotta or like a clay cylinder that I wrapped moss around and some other aquarium plants. Finally have it somewhere where I can see it before it was just like around in different various places because I never knew where to put it. I have a plant that I got from my friend Jahao. So it is a Thematophyllum Xanadu. Um, and I'm thinking of using it over here where the avocado plant used to be. It might be too big, but I think a larger plant here would be nice because this area, especially when the blinds are down, it just looks very white. This area is just so empty, so. I think a larger plant here would look nice. And I've been really liking the Xanadu lately. I've seen some pictures of it when it gets more mature and the leaf size gets much larger and it looks really cool. Um, I'll show you guys some pictures of it. I'll be potting that later in this video. And then here is a new pot that I got. It's kind of different than most of the pots that I get, but I thought that this would pair really well with a cactus or a succulent, like a an interesting shaped one. I like that the legs look like little crab legs. It was recently our fifth anniversary for Chris and I, and he got me a really pretty bouquet of flowers, um, but they had a lot of aphids on it. And it's been a week or so, so the bouquet is now gone, but I kept this little flower, and now it's completely wilted, so 
this one will probably go soon too. I mentioned this briefly in my last video, but I have this aquarium here. I am not making it into an aquarium. I'm making it into a terrarium. So I have this grow light on top and then it has a lid on it. I was originally going to pretty much do the same thing that I did with my Ikea greenhouse cabinet, but I was scrolling through Instagram and I saw this Instagram account that does these really cool moss like landscapes. I was thinking that a minimal like moss scape would have a larger impact. Something more minimal and sleek would stand out from the rest of what's going on around it. I also thought it would be kind of boring if I did the same thing that I did with my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. Over here is where I am thinking of putting the aquarium that's in my room currently. I don't know if you guys remember this plant. Um, I potted it in that one really large pot that Chris ended up uh, cracking um, and knocking over and then I put it back together. But then I tried to do that one bending method on it and then I accidentally snapped the plant and I pretty much broke it in half. So like that pot is just bad luck or something. I'll move this stuff off and then get the aquarium ready to move out here. Hopefully it will look good. I've recently seen some aquariums in photos of like homes that I like. It got me thinking like, why don't I have my aquariums? Like out on display. I've been so unsure what to do with this area. So I think the aquarium will help fill in the space a little bit. So there aren't any fish in here anymore. There's just shrimp. Yeah, this aquarium looks really good for like not doing that much maintenance to it. Um, obviously the plants are very overgrown. I really like how the plants are emerging out of the aquarium and onto this piece of wood that was like my original goal when putting this together. So that's the filter. I'm gonna take off this light. It's so dusty. I haven't really been taking the best care of this aquarium. Um, I don't know, sometimes aquariums feel like a lot of work and then I just end up avoiding it. But yeah, I think it being outside in the living room will motivate me more to take care of it because I'll want it to stay looking nice. So now I move this thing. I think it's okay. What do you think? Um, okay, so should, do you think I should push it back more? Just a little bit more forward. Yeah. Look much better with a nice cleaning. Maybe I should get snail. Oh, but snails always make aquariums look so messy because there's just a ton of little snails everywhere. But that might be kind of nice because they help me clean the aquarium. Is it messier without the snails and it's all algae-like or is it messier with all the snails but it's clean and clear? You know, you make a good point. And then I'd have to do less work. Okay, maybe I'll add snails. <laughs> I've been very into like making less work for myself where I can. Before I felt like I had a lot more time and energy to upkeep with like a ton of plants or a ton of aquariums. Like when I was in college, I had like eight aquariums, which is insane thinking about it now. I'm trying to find ways to make my maintenance for my plants and my aquariums more, I don't know, just more relaxed and less stressful. Cause I think that's when like I find the most joy when I can have time to appreciate it rather than just always worrying about maintaining an upkeep all the time. Now let's add some water. Well first maybe I could add the light. This is one of my biggest like water holding vessels. So I'm using dechlorinator and I just put some drops into here and then I just use tap water for my aquariums. This grow light is very cool toned. So I'm gonna see if maybe I can find a warmer toned light. Doing some small cleanings um, with this old toothbrush that I cleaned thoroughly so there isn't any toothpaste gunk on it. Deal back up. 
So yeah, I'm not gonna have any fish in here because I don't want to use a lid. Dale, get away. <laughs> get away from me, Theo. I'm trying to talk. I'm not gonna put any fish in here because they might jump out since I don't have a lid and um, the driftwood is sticking out so I can't even put a lid on there if I wanted to. So we have set it up. Theo, what are you doing? <laughs> get off, get off of that. He's just really curious right now since uh, it's a new thing and he's always like, wondering what we're doing. He's not really gonna mess with it. He doesn't mess with too much stuff. So here we have the aquarium all set up. It's looking pretty good. The filter's running, I just added the filter and it looks pretty cool here. The only thing is that the lighting is very different from the rest of the room. So I'll we'll have to figure that out. But I do like this wider lighting for aquariums though because it brings out the colors of the plants a lot better. I like the wood here, like the aquascape wood on top. Deal. Stop. Um, looks pretty cool with the creature lamp. And then also this other piece of wood that I have back there. I thought maybe it'd be too much like nature-y stuff in a living room, but I don't know. It's what I like, so I feel like it's fine. We're gonna take him on a walk. He's been sleeping all day because it's been so cold, but now he has all the energy. Wanna go on a walk? Wanna go on a walk? Okay. <laughs> we are going to repot some plants now. I did forget to mention this um, before when I was doing plant updates. My dad air layered my Dracaena Reflexa. And there's this really, really long branch that I am going to cut off and then I'm gonna give them this plant and it started rooting. Come here, Chris. You can see it's now put out some roots. So what he did was he like, shaved off or cut off the outer layer of the stem and then wrapped it with uh, moist sphagnum moss. And after about a month or so, it rooted and it should be ready to cut soon-ish. I don't know, I think I might wait for the roots to develop more since it is such a long branch. Normally I repot the plants in the office, um, but the lighting isn't that great in here, so I'm going to repot them in the kitchen. In here I have like my soil and I have some other soil amendments and top dressing stuff. It looks messy in this corner. I need to figure out how I want to organize my soil and substrates and things. Let's set up the repotting station outside. The first plant I'm gonna pot is the Thematophyllum xanadu. So I am going to use this pot. It currently has a plant in it, so I'm gonna take out this plant and then pot the xanadu in it. I got to my soil and I have um, my amendment that I'm gonna be adding in. So I'm using uh, just a regular potting soil. So this is, I forget what the, I think it's called bang soil. Um, it's just like the cheapest potting soil at my local nursery. And then I have fir bark. Normally I add pumice into my mixes, but I don't have any pumice right now. And this plant is pretty large for the pot it's gonna be in. So it's going to need to retain more moisture than normal. Also, this is a porous clay pot. So it also um, dries out pretty quickly. This table is extendable, so. I'm gonna extend it for my repotting. So lately for my repotting, I've just been using these really big plastic containers. If you're Vietnamese or maybe just like Asian American, you're probably very familiar with these. I use this now because it keeps the soil contained. I used to use a repotting mat, but it wasn't tall enough, so soil still spilled everywhere. But this has made it a lot easier and a lot cleaner. Um, and it's only like $7 and you can get them at Asian grocery stores. But this is a small Dracaena Reflexa. If you guys saw my one video where I did the plant installation with Jahao, uh, this was one of the small plants that came with the bigger plant. I just potted it in this pot in the meantime um, to fill in the space where the avocado plant was. So I like that little plant, but I don't really want it in the kitchen because there's the giant one very close to it. So yeah, I want a different plant filling in that spot. Here is the Xanadu. So as you can see, it's quite large in comparison to the pot, especially. I think it'll be okay though. I'm going to trim some of these roots back. Um, like there's this really long root. So I'm just gonna trim this back because 
Uh, I think it's dried out. It's been out of the soil for a while, so some of the longer ones are pretty dried out. So I want it to kind of be at an angle since it's going to be in the corner. I'm using a mix of just potting soil and um, fir bark because this is a very small pot and it's porous and this plant is pretty large. Once the plant establishes its roots, the soil is going to dry out pretty fast. And if I add too much pumice or perlite, then I'm going to have to water a lot more frequently than I'd like to. So whenever I repot my plants, I fertilize with this. This is the KIS Organics Fertilizer. This isn't sponsored at all. I've been using them for about a year. Um, in one of my repotting videos, I think almost a year ago now, I used this uh, fertilizer. I do one to two tablespoons per gallon of potting soil. And this is the only fertilizer I use now for all of my plants and soil-based media. It comes in a powder form and I don't know, it's just really easy to apply and I've had good results with my plants. And I really like using organic fertilizers, mostly because it makes the care for my plants a lot easier. When you use synthetic fertilizers, you have to like add it to your water whenever you water. And then you have to remember like when was the last time I fertilized this plant. And then you also have to flush the plant every like month or so to flush out any excess uh, salts and mineral deposits. And with organic fertilizers, you don't really have to do that. I either mix it with my potting soil when I'm repotting a plant or I use it as a top dressing. KIS is a pretty small company but the owner of it, his name is Tad, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce it, he reached out to me and asked if like we could do a collaboration and I really like the KIS products and their research and like science backing behind their products and I got on a call with him but uh, the logistics of creating a product, especially a fertilizer, um, especially one that's like organic certified is a lot of work. So instead of creating another product, I'm selling this fertilizer on my website. Um, so I think by the time this video is up, the listing should be up on the website. Also this bag I've had for over a year and I still have so much left in it. Um, so yeah, that will last you a very long time. So I always like give a good shake to my plants um, whenever I repot them. So that way the soil settles in, um, in between the roots. Here's how it looks. I've really been liking the Xanadu a lot lately. I like the mature leaves and I like the thematophyllum stems. They look really cool once they grow out a bit. You guys know I really like top dressing my plants with stuff. Lately I've been really into black lava rock as a top dressing and then also micro akadama. This is the micro akadama. I didn't even know this existed until I went to a succulent and uh, cactus store um, called Mimi's Succulents or Mimi's Nursery and they were selling this and it looks really cool as a top dressing. I think the smaller particle size works really well for house plants because the scale of the house plant and the top dressing, uh, it just looks nicer. The same thing goes with aquariums as well. Like when you use big pebbles in your aquariums, it looks kind of weird and same goes with top dressing in my opinion. Like you don't really want to use river rocks as top dressing, like large river rocks. I'm just adding this on top. So this helps a lot with like the stability as well and it also helps with uh, making it just look nicer. It's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to water it. You can see Chris's cameraman set up over here, tripod and chair. <laughs> so what's nice about Akadama is that you can tell when the plant has enough water because the Akadama will get super dark like this because it's filled with water. It's not like the perfect indication of whether it needs water or not, but it does kind of give you a little bit of a visual cue. So my plan is to have it right here. Um. <laughs> okay, yeah, I need to reposition. So right now the plant is a little bit droopy since it's been without water or substrate. After maybe a day or a couple days, the plant will perk up now that it has water 
and then we'll see where the leaves are positioned. This needs to be lifted a little bit more so it's not in the way. So moving on, the next plant I'm repotting is my Raphidophora foraminifera. And I talked about this plant for the first time in my video where I discussed um, some unique house plants. Doing well in terms of like root growth and it's grown a couple of leaves, but the new leaves that are coming out don't look that great and it's become less mature, so there aren't any fenestrations on it anymore. So I need to give it something to climb on um, or I just need to give it some type of support in order for it to grow those uh, larger fenestrated leaves that I want. I am repotting it into this pot. It's not my like first pot of choice in terms of aesthetics, but it's the largest pot I have on hand right now. As for the staking method I'm gonna be using, I am going to use this wood plank that I have. I don't really like how this looks that much um, as a staking method, but I don't want to make a moss pole and I don't have any wood stakes that are around this size right now. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna use this. I don't dislike how it looks, but it's not my favorite. I think it's because it just looks like a wood plank that was cut out and then from the back it looks a little bit strange as well so it kind of limits where you can place the plant. I do know that this works and I do need a method to stake the plant up so I'm going to be using this. Totally forgot about this and I'm probably going to get questions about it but yes I do repot in the winter. I'm kind of like unaware or I guess like ignorant of what kind of temperatures you guys um, experience. Obviously it doesn't get that cold in California, like it doesn't really snow here, at least where I am in Southern California. So I'm able to repot pretty much all year round. Also, I'm not growing my plants outside, I'm growing them indoors for the most part. So they're not that affected by the change in the seasons. And I also have grow lights. I'm growing this Raphidophora in my plant office right now. So I don't care too much about the presentation of it because my plant office is kind of just where I grow out my plants. Once this plant uh, grows up and matures and gets to looking how I want it to look, then I'll repot it into a nicer pot um, for presentation's sake. I'm gonna fill this gap between the wood plank and the plant with sphagnum moss. And I actually have this sphagnum moss that I grew myself. Um, so I just harvested this recently. I cut it from my bin that I have and I'm just gonna fill this space with moss. Um, that way it feels supported in this area and it potentially grows roots from the aerial roots that it has. So now I'm just gonna use my twine and tie the plant to the plank. How do you feel about how the plank looks, Chris? It's okay. <laughs> it looks like the thing from Eleven Eddie. <laughs> like it looks like plank. <laughs> Another plant done. I think it's gonna grow well. Good luck. So the next plant is my ant fern. I am not sure what the species name is. I can't remember. I'll put it on the screen somewhere. It's getting pretty dark now. Now that it's uh, fall, winter, the sun is going down really quickly and sunsets at like 4.50 or so. And it's also really windy. Everything, like all the trees and stuff are making a ton of noise outside. So for this plant, I've never grown an ant plant before, but the person who I purchased this from said that they grow theirs in sphagnum moss. Um, so I'm going to grow mine in sphagnum moss as well, um, but then mix in some fir bark and some soil. I need to look more into the care for these. I hope it's not too high maintenance. I got it for a good price, which is why I purchased it without doing any prior research. But I just think that the concept of ant plants are really cool. They have a relationship with ants where the ants like live inside of their chambers or their cavities. I think that the ants protect them. I'm not sure. I learned this in college um, my first year. Chris and I had the same class and we both learned about uh, ant plants and their relationship with ants, but I can't seem to remember and neither can Chris. I read somewhere that they recommend not using tap water for your ant ferns, but I'm just gonna use tap water because I'm able to get away with using tap water for some of my staghorn fern species that they also recommend not using tap water for. It's raining again. Gotta finish filming before it gets too dark. So the next plant I'm repotting, and I think this is the last plant that I will repot, 
Um, this is the Jurassic Sensitive Plant. I got this from my friend Vincent. It closes its leaves at night, I think, and when it gets touched, it takes a while for it to close its leaves. It's not as responsive as the other sensitive plant that's on the market, but it does close its leaves uh, eventually, albeit much slower. But what draws me to this plant isn't the sensitive leaves, it's the look of the plant. So it just looks like a mini palm tree and this would look great in a terrarium setting. So I don't know, I'm thinking, hmm, should I put this in a terrarium? I had something else in this terrarium, but I took it out a while ago and it's just been empty. And I think this plant would look pretty cool in it because like I said, it kind of looks like a little palm and it creates seeds really easily that will fall down and then germinate into more plants. So it can be like a little forest of palm trees. Okay, I'm gonna try this. I've never tried this before. I'm gonna use a base layer of Akadama because I think it looks nicer. I also don't often do soil-based um, terrariums, but I have this soil that I've had for a while. Um, it's Repti Soil by Zoomed, and I'm gonna try and remove as much soil as I can very loosely. Um, that way it's easier to plant in the terrarium. So windy. I'm gonna water this little terrarium. Um, I didn't do that much with it because I am planning for the plant to put out more seeds and then create more plants. I'm gonna put this in the office and the plant looks really sad right now, but it's because there's a bunch of water on the leaves, so it's too heavy for its stem to support it. We put the table back to its spot. And now we are going to water. I have two watering cans. This is the smaller one that I use for like my smaller plants or um, those that I need to be more precise with. This one I use for most of my larger plants. It has a larger capacity, which is nice because that means less trips to the sink. I really should have potted this passiflora in a larger pot because I have to water it probably like once every two or three days. That was in the hotter months though, so I might not have to do as much now. But yeah, this pot is way too small and I just haven't gotten around to uh, getting another pot for it. Oh, the sun's out now. Nice. Watering my Dracaena. I probably water this like once every two weeks. Dracaenas can go a while without watering. They're pretty drought resistant. My string of turtles ball that I need to water right now. Um, it used to have a fern in it, but I removed the fern because it made it difficult to take care of. I would have to water it very frequently, but with just the string of turtles, I don't really need to water it as often. This Monstera Sierrana I already watered pretty recently. So now let's water some of the hanging slash mounted plants. So this is my Hoya Linearis in the UFO pot and then my string of turtles ball. I kind of have this method now that I've been using for a while for watering my plants that are mounted and some that are in smaller pots. I use the stopper for my sink and then I just fill my sink up with water. I just dunk the plants or the mounted plants in it, just like this. And sometimes I'll just run some water on top. It's just like a really quick and easy way to water my plants. And then I just leave it here to hang and then it drips into the sink. Then I'll be doing the same with my string of turtles ball, just letting it kind of soak up the water um, and float in there for a little bit. Now I need to water my air plants. I haven't watered these in a while. I normally water them maybe once every two weeks and I fully submerge them in water and I leave them there for about four or six hours. And that's what an air plant person on Instagram told me to do and it's honestly a lot easier than misting and uh, it's worked really well for me so far. I'm just gonna let these soak here for a couple of hours. In the office, I watered most of these plants um, fairly recently so they don't need any water, but the mother passiflora plant looks like it could use some water, so I'll water that one. Then lastly, we are in my bedroom. Um, I just did my laundry, so I need to fold it. Don't mind that. The last plant I need to water in here is my big Philodendron Glorious. I was gonna go out and water some plants on the balcony, but it rained so much and they don't need water anymore. That's all the plant care that I need to do today. Um, so I guess I'll end this video. 
standing on top of my bed next to my pile of clothes with Theo digging in my clothes. Oh, his toy was in there. <laughs> okay, well, uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a good day. Um, now, I think Chris and I are just gonna eat and chill out on this rainy day. We don't get that many rainy days in Los Angeles, so it feels kind of special when it does rain. Uh, okay, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.